company. Venezuela used to be tremendously, not always, not free, but semi-free, a mixed economy, and a tremendously productive, prosperous. I mean, you know how much oil they, they sit on. Hugo Chavez was elected in the late 90s uh, with the promise of, he, he called it 21st century socialism. This isn't my words. This is kind of, he was running on, this is going to be 21st century socialism. And now, what is it, 17 years later, you see where you know, that has gotten us. And it started with everything from, speaking of property, uh, uh, taking pe private landowners' property. Mm, the taking, government. Yeah, sure. Government confiscating private landowners' property, government confiscating people's businesses. You know, surprise, surprise, everyone starts leaving. The smart ones start leaving. Government starts uh, regulating more and more of the economy. And, you know, here's what you get. So you get a country that's sitting on all this oil wealth with no one to work the machines, understand the machines, produce from the machines, and, um, you know, inflation at, you know, I mean, the, I, on my website, capitalistpig.com, I mean, I give out the banknotes essentially as promotional material because their, their dollar used to be the, worth the same as ours. But, you know, what is a dollar? It's just a promise. It's just a representation of ideas. Did you say you give you, uh, yeah, their like little, bank notes away yeah, as yeah, promotional well, materials? Yeah, their, their, their currency has become yeah. worthless. People, as you said, are you know, literally starving in the streets. It's not because the water is so different down there or that there, there's something environmental that happens in Caracas. It's because of the ideas. Didn't the same thing happen in Russia? Because they sit on a bunch of natural resources as well, right? Sure. But I mean, of course. The, you know, the Soviet Union, communism, yeah. I mean, succeeded in killing. By the time the Soviet Union came to its end at the end of the Cold War, I don't know how many hundreds of millions of people had died. And certainly America had gone on to become, you know, these stories about, you know, um, you know, Gorbachev, etc., coming to coming to America during the end of the Cold War and being amazed by all the pro the <laughs> produce and the and it's true because there was literally still bread lines in Amer in in the Soviet Union at the same time that America was already basking in tremendous tremendous prosperity. That's it's and again it's it's so funny, Michelle, because it's not it's not hard to imagine. Look at North and South Korea. Look at that line in the sand of darkness, North Korea, and tremendous mm. prosperity and and light in South Korea. It's not because of the water or anything else. It's because of the ideas. Capitalists, now South Korea isn't as capitalist as I'd like, of course, but where capitalism lives, I think where Americanism lives, where people are left free, great prosperity emerges for all. And when government and collectivism rules, it's death and destruction always. So what do people mean when they say socialism has never been tried correctly? What, 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 do, what do they mean when they say that? I. I I really don't know. Uh, they say, give me another chance. Give, me, give us one more chance to take over your life. And I mean, it's, it's, um, like, it's, it's false. I mean, I mean, well, I mean, Venezuela is socialism. It's a, it's a kind of a recent textbook example of socialism. But I mean, there's, there's, I mean, North Korea is a living, breathing textbook example. You don't have to go back to the old, you know, dusty textbook. Oh, I read about something back in the 1400s. These are living, breathing examples of, of what happens under socialism. And the, the Nordic countries, as we, we talked mm -hmm. about before, these are really more mixed economies. Elements of capitalism, elements of socialism. And historically, the more free an economy, the more free a country, always the most prosperous. I mean, that's, that's why if you look at the, you know, the history of, of the world, I mean, America has always been the most prosperous uh, because we've always been the most free. I fear sometimes these days that's a little bit in jeopardy and, and changing. And, it, and I mean, it, it could not be the case in the future. But, you know, why don't amazing new companies emerge from socialist economies so, you know there is, there is no there is no high tech sector in socialist economies and government yeah. controlled societies there's do, no there's no thinking there it, you need a free mind to create something like facebook do, do you know um what, what you know th these proponents of of like i guess a new age socialism do you know what their rebuttal or argument is for venezuela or these these countries where it's failed do you know what they say towards that and, and why that's not what they're trying to do? Why that's not the right kind of socialism? I mean, it, it, I don't know what their, their specific rebuttal is, but it all starts with that, the question that Rand starts with in the book. You know, the basic premise today is, you know, who owns your life, individualism or collectivism? Are we all in it together or do you have a right to your own life? Uh, you have very limited time on this earth. So, I, you know, they would say, well, it's because there was government corruption. I imagine they'd say, oh, they're, 
because I mean, they would come up with some excuse, but it's always some excuse to appeal basically to your sympathy, to your altruism. Ayn Rand writes and talks about quite a bit of, you know, why? Well, you know, what if, what if people fall through the cracks? What if this and that? It's always used as the, as the excuse to, you know, get you to give up your life, you know, give up your mm. rights, give up your, um, give up those principles. And that's where it always starts yeah. and, uh, and ends disastrously every time. There's a couple, a few other questions that I thought were really interesting. More on the the social issue spectrum. One of them was, um, is, uh, was it racial prejudice? Yes. Un American. Sure. Was the question? Of course. I mean, that, I am infuriated when I hear people, you know, young people especially, will say, "Oh, don't you know?" I mean, I don't even want to repeat it because it's an insult. But there's a sense that somehow Americanism and racism are them. Now, you know, America, of course there was slavery in America was founded. Mm -hmm. We fought a tremendous bloody war to eradicate slavery from America. Thankfully, that was the right moral thing to do. And also from the rest of the world at the same time. I mean, America isn't about, and this is written, the essay is written by Amy Peikoff in the book, you know, racism is, it's like a barnyard way of looking at people. Isn't it really like, well, you know, this color, they think like this and that color, they think like that. It's, it's an insult to the human mind and it's not true. I mean, people, what makes people is not what color of their skin, but it's their ideas, that the, the ideas that they hold. And that's, you know, the, the capitalist, it's part of what I love about capitalism is that the, the capitalist, the, the, the capitalist doesn't care what color you are, doesn't care what, you know, what, uh, you know, whether you're a man or female or anything that your sexual preference like mm -hmm. that, they want, it, they want he, he or she wants to trade with you. So yes, this idea of judging people based on a, a biologic, uh, Pre, you know, pre disposition or a biological entity is, I think, completely un American. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's an interesting point about uh, the Constitution is that it's like they wrote it in there. Obviously, they weren't necessarily abiding by it, by it when they had slaves and, you know, women couldn't live completely free lives. But it, that was interesting that, that it was written before they even implemented it. Yes. Yes. I mean, I, you know, there, there's not. Um, you have to give the founders a little bit of credit in the context of human life on Earth. That there always been there'd always been slavery, you know, for since the, the dawn of time up until this 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 country, mm -hmm. and this was a real revolutionary thing. And the ideas were there. I think the founders were missing some of the the basic morality to ground them. That's I think part of actually what Ayn Rand's genius is what she has uh, she has brought. But you know, looking at people based on their race, everyone left and right should reject whole cloth. Judging people, anticipating that they feel some way based on their race. Well, they're, you know, they're Jewish. They probably think like this, or they're. I mean, I could go on and on. It doesn't matter. It's 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 such an insult to the human mind. You know, I mean, we're, you know, we. There's a there's a line that certainly is an Ayn Rand, but I think of the line from Terminator too. You know, no fate but what we make. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching the episode. If you're interested in contributing to the conversation and supporting the show, there's two easy things you can do. One, click subscribe. And two, visit our Patreon page where you get exclusive access to the Exploring Minds community.